Now, the world's poorest economies had a lifeline handed to them, an economic lifeline of sorts handed to them this morning. The G20 has agreed to suspend debt service payments at least until to the end of the year. Now, that'll free up some $20 billion for developing countries. The Saudis hosted the G20 meeting yesterday via video conference. The Saudi finance minister is Mohammed Al Jadan. He joins me now from Riyadh for this exclusive uh, discussion. Minister, thank you. The, the G20 seems to have been slow to start, but is now picking up speed with real concrete policies that are going to help those most in need. Thank you very much, Richard. I think the G20, to the opposite, the G20 have actually acted very quickly, robustly, strongly, and swiftly. We have had 10 meetings over the last six weeks. The uh, custodian of the two holy mosques called for an extraordinary summit that was held on 26th of March, which mandated the ministers of finance and the ministers of health to put together a plan. That plan had been worked on for the last two weeks and was announced yesterday that uh, came about with full agreement from the G20 members, full cooperation, full solidarity. Uh, that plan included, uh, as you have just said, uh, suspension of all debt service to the poor countries. Uh, that would give them a breathing space right. of uh, north of $20 right. billion, dollars, in addition to obviously various others. So, the, the speed, the severity, and, and the shock that uh, these countries have received calls for an assistance. Is it your thinking, Minister, that more will need to be done to help those most indebted countries? It's one thing to suspend debt service, but don't you think in the fullness of time you're going to be looking at debt relief. G20 presidency uh, strategy, which we have discussed with the G20 members and international organizations, basically consists of assessing consistently because you know the economic and, and health situation develops every day, so we need to monitor it every day, and then ensure that we protect, we protect the people, we protect the health service workers on the front line, we protect businesses, and that has been done. Seven trillion US dollars have been injected by the G20 economies and the economy. Uh, and then, obviously, the uh, uh, developing nations and poor countries that they have received the debt suspension. This is just a temporary process, because for us to look at restructuring of the debt, providing more debt, which will take time. So. Yes, there is a need, and we are working on it as we speak through the G20 action plan that we have put together and was approved yesterday. Okay. In terms of the money that Saudi is putting aside towards pandemic, understanding pandemic relief, you're putting 500 million towards that that will be dispersed to various organizations. Uh, is this goal towards helping fund a vaccine to help fund readiness for the future? Absolutely. I think for the last few years, uh, the health organizations around the world were crying out for support. Uh, that funding gap, the immediate uh, urgent funding gap was not met. Uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, during the extraordinary summit, uh, by the leaders uh, have agreed with the G20 members to put together a plan to fill that gap. Currently, that gap, the short-term gap, is assessed at $8 billion, uh, and we are announcing through your channel now, your, through your network, that we are putting, we are committing $500 million uh, to the various international organizations, and we are calling on right. the rest of the G20 members and the international uh, organizations, the rest of the world, to put together more money to fill the $8 billion uh, dollar gap, and we believe that will be done. Right. Uh, Minister, I want to talk about your own economy, if I may, sir, uh, and, and not so much about whether this pri oil price will stick or not, but 
the ability of your economy, which is showing certain signs of spending strains to maintain the current levels of spending, which would be very difficult with oil prices at these lower levels and the agreed cuts. How far do you think you'll have to suspend the Crown Prince's vision for the future? the diversification, the Vision 2030 plan, how much will that have to be altered and suspended to account for the new economic reality? Richard, we are facing this uh, shock, uh, whether it is the COVID-19 uh, or the oil price, from a point of strength. And that was confirmed, if you recall, only in the last 10 days, the three uh, international rating agencies Standard & Poor, uh, Fitch, and uh, the, the, the rest of them have confirmed Saudi Arabia's uh, rating with an outlook uh, staple. Uh, we have done a lot of work in the last three years to diversify the economy. We uh, have significant uh, financial buffers. So we believe that we will be able to face it. We will need to reprioritize our spending, of course, like everybody else. But I believe the main plans are on track. And in terms of the ability of the Gulf Sovereign Wealth Funds to, I, I, I mean, there's no easy way to use that phrase other than take advantage of a situation of beaten down prices. Do you, what would you say will be Saudi's policy in terms of opportunistic uh, uh, purchases, companies, investments, because prices are lower and many of your sovereign wealth funds do indeed have capital to invest. What will your policy be on this? I believe uh, the Public Investment Fund, which manages Saudi Arabia's uh, uh, sovereign wealth, uh, is in addition, obviously, to the central bank, which has significant foreign reserves. But BIF itself has, an, has its own board and they have decided that they will allocate certain funding to use it for a opportunistic investment in addition to their long-term strategy. Minister, uh, finally, as, as you look out at the Saudi G20 presidency, uh, what, briefly, what is still to do? What do you now see as your main responsibility leading the G20 for the rest of the term. Richard, let me tell you that I was very thrilled and pleased with how the G20 members came together since the start of the COVID-19. Obviously, we had an agenda that we are continuing with, and we had an overwhelming support from the G20 members to continue with the agenda. But then there are certain parts of it that we adjusted to deal with the COVID-19. The members are committed to continue with that agenda. We need to make, make sure that we continue assessing the situation, whether economically or health. We need to make sure that we protect and protect the people, we protect businesses. And we may need to make sure that we prepare the world for recovery. And that's what we are now discussing amongst the members, but also with the international organization, is how we are preparing people to exit from the containment measures into the recovery and prepare the world for a a quick recovery out of the COVID-19. Thank you, Minister. I appreciate your time today. Thank you.